What's up, YouTube? So, that was it. That was season six of Game of Thrones. And boy, howdy, did we have one hell of an episode. And to use one hell of a terrible pun, it was too lit to quit. Yes, the everything that I predicted has pretty much come true. And I loved the reverse kind of red wedding at the end, or near the end, sorry, with Walter Frey. We had Tom and just literally just go, thanks for the cheese, see you later, when his poor wife died in the sept of the Baylor. And yeah, so this was one hell of a crazy episode. Tower of Joy pretty much confirmed. We know the mother of Jon Snow, we just don't know the father of her just yet. Well, I did enjoy this episode. It is, in my opinion, the best finale so far just for the fact that it pretty much had everything in it everything that we wanted to happen happened and just the shots the cinematography of the episode was just stunning and the production team behind game of thrones should be applauded once again i didn't think they would top the battle of the bastards but they topped it and they made it look even better and we even got a brand new king of the north we're here with Jon snow himself so the High Sparrow has actually been a complete and utter pain in the arse for Cersei here in King's Landing. And it seems he really has completely underestimated the length that Cersei will actually go to save her family and win. Which, in this case, to destroy the entire Sept of the Baelor, which is insane. And the graphics and the cinematography... When it was shown in the Sparrow's eyes as he realised just what the fuck was actually happening was just superb. And the, just again goes to show the shots in this episode were stunning. Especially this here when we have her bit getting ready for her trial, which we both know was not going to happen. So the death count here in Game of Thrones, the finale Winds of Winter, is now astronomically high as we have... Main cast with High Sparrow, Marguerite, and the Knight of Flowers, Loras Tyrell, bitten the dust. Which, I think that's it. That's good. That's the end of her story, and it's led the Tyrells to go inside with Daenerys, as we saw, hinted at at the end with the Sand Snakes as well, which I thought was absolutely awesome, and showing varies that, yeah, he is the one to stick with, and do not piss him off. So we've got Cersei here, also at the end with her being queen is stunning, and it's going to be a big rift between her and Jamie, I think, obviously because Tommen is now dead, at a result of the direct action that Cersei took, which, yeah, so we're going to expect some kind of fireworks there, and will Brienne of Tarth finally, are we going to finally be able to ship Brienne of Tarth? and Jamie Lannister together. Also, wineboarding is now a thing here, and, well, this is not going to be a pretty end for the shame lady here, is it? Now, originally, when we saw Walter Frey discuss things with Jamie Lannister, I was expecting that the girl who was helping them out in the kind of handy wine way, that is, was going to be a plant by Jamie Lannister, as he said the last thing to Walter Frey, he said that, well, what's the point of keeping it? But there's going to be big divisions, I think, because the Lannisters will be blamed for the murder. But it was actually Arya Stark being a complete and utter badass. So she must have stolen a few of those faces before she actually left the House of the Black and White, which just, that was, to me, that was the most shocking part. I mean, I kind of thought she may do something like that, but that was it out of the gate, destroyed Walter Frey, and now she's going to head north to her family, and we're going to see that great Stark reunion. And Bran is also to the north as well, just near the walls, so he's not far away. Well, he's kind of, but not too far away like he was. So Samuel is finally at the Citadel of all the maesters, where he will learn to become a maester, just like, well, his predecessor before him who in the books actually died on the way there on the boat so it's a bit different here obviously because well 
a lot of things are now different in the TV show compared to the books. So it's a pretty funny little scene here. We need some humour after, well, pretty much one hell of an opening scene. So the irregularities here, he's going to have to kind of overcome, well, the difficult situation. But the Citadel, the library, looks stunning here. And I can't help but think it's kind of like the library in the Warcraft movie and obviously the Warcraft game as well. So I couldn't help but notice the differences there and the similarities. So is he kind of like the Cadgar role here, possibly? I think that Samuel will probably find some sort of book here which will kind of help out John try and kill the rest of the White Walkers that are now possibly heading towards them. I'm a bit disappointed we didn't end with the Night's King destroying the wall, but... I guess that'll probably be the opening of the next season. One of the only disappointments of the episode for me was actually this scene here with Melisandre and Davos confronting her about killing Shireen. But I guess it kind of had to happen. She had to leave. But, like, she did kind of give Jon Snow his life back and in turn gave the Starks back Winterfell. So... Maybe there could have been some leeway there, and obviously she's going to provide a lot of help moving forward. But obviously, they pointed out the fact that she did all these things for um, Stannis the Manis, but it didn't work out, did it? And she was completely wrong, so they're not really going to put all their eggs in one basket with her. One thing as well to applaud the writing staff and also the production staff for the whole show is the fact that, well, the Starks don't just send their regards, they actually follow through with what they're going to do and then walk away. So pretty much Jon Snow, when he hung all Ollie and the people who betrayed him, he walked away. Sansa had um, obviously Ramsay die, then walked away, and now she, Arya, killed the waif, walked away, and now she has killed all the freight here and walked away. So she has just pretty much finished her bucket list. Bucket list? <laughs> so this was a really, really cool bit. I really loved this, and it's a great development for Arya, who has possibly had one of the best stories this season. So here we've got Peter pretty much revealing his plans to marry Sansa and, well, take the Iron Throne, which is a lot different to the books here, because obviously... In the books, you had Sansa at the Eyrie and growing in intelligence, not really trusting Peter at all and looking after Robert Arryn. So she'd pretty much gone full badass and now she's like, that's a pretty picture. And, well, another complaint I would say about this season is not enough Littlefinger at all. He's one of my favourite characters easily, but maybe he was too busy filming for the game Quantum Break as well, perhaps. Now, Peter isn't one to be trusted, but, well, I don't think that it was a good idea maybe Sansa to completely part him off like that. But perhaps she may be able to outmaneuver him, but it is a little finger after all, and I think this will come back to bite her on the bum. So, Bran and Mira are now nearing the wall. We've got confirmation that Bran is now considering himself as the Three-Eyed Raven, and Benjen can't actually go to the south past the wall because he mentions obviously the spells that are put in the wall. When the wall was actually built, a lot of maesters, etc. put spells and magic in the wall and at the foundations so that the things like the, obviously the White Walkers, cannot actually pass through the gate. So they're going to have to bring that wall crashing down if they want to go through it. But... What I thought was funny was the fact that Benjamin just rode off on his horse and left Bran just sitting there. Obviously, I don't think Mira could be able to carry him, but maybe they still have that sledge, so that might help them out. Also, one interesting fact as well is that Bran is at the Weirwood where the Night's Watch take their oath, so he's very, very close to the wall. So this is it. This is the absolute... Big one. The biggest mystery in Game of Thrones, in my opinion, is as to who is Jon Snow's mother. A lot of people obviously found it completely not believable whatsoever that Ned would just cheat on Caitlyn when he was out fighting near the Riverlands or the Twins, etc. And just 
bear a child and bring it home. So, also we had the R plus L equals J theory, which is obviously that Rhaegar and Lyanna, well, they're the parents of Jon Snow. So, we have Lyanna here at the Tower of Joy, and we find out confirmation who his mother is, but we do not actually have confirmation just yet who his father is. But the importance here lies in the fact, what did Lyanna whisper to Ned here? Now, the important part seems to be cut out by cut to Bran, realising, wow, what the hell was going on? So I've slowed it down, had a look, let bread it, and it does seem like it says, the baby is, and then it lo looks like the mouthing of Rhaegar, which... Maybe that's me being wishful thinking, but it does look like this. she's saying like the baby is Rhaegar's. You know Robert will kill him if he finds out. So Ned, obviously it being his nephew, does not want that to happen, which is a terrible thing, obviously. And Ned, being the dutiful man, takes him back and says that it's his bastard, and that's that. So it does seem, obviously, that, well... Obviously, Jon Snow is completely full-blooded and he's not a bastard whatsoever, which is interesting. So, he is the rightful king in the north, obviously, just like Lady Mormont gave us that rousing speech and was a complete badass. So, we have the power finally back in the north, just in time for Daenerys' army of misfits to destroy them. So it's all changed here in the north with Lady Mormont, like I said, completely making every male in that room, apart from Jon Snow, look like a complete bellend. So the arguments over the wildlings, etc. seem to be quashed for now, with the Jon Snow being proclaimed King of the North, which, well, that went well, didn't it, before? But I think they believe that Jon Snow is maybe a better tactician etc before because obviously he took Winterfell here so that he has some kind of hope behind him there so this is going to be interesting moving forward obviously with the invading army invading Westeros and like Tyrion did mention and obviously well they could be moving towards actually King's Landing so they're invading from the south and will probably move upwards there I don't think Daenerys will be too happy with a King proclaiming himself in the north. But I'm hoping that they maybe marry and then, yeah, well, that's just a crazy theory. And so that's it. The final shots of season six. We had Daenerys and her army. So if you're losing track of her army at the moment, we have her with the Unsullied. We have the Greyjoys, who I'm not sure where Euron has gone. He must have disappeared. Maybe he died off screen or something or whatever, but. I guess that storyline hasn't just quite come to an end just yet, and it will probably be part of the conquest of Westeros. And also, obviously, we have the Dothraki as well with her, and obviously, I think the at the end with Venerys, or Varys, sorry, actually showing himself there after power brokering, we have the Tyrells and the Dornish men. More importantly, we have the Sand Snakes on side as well. So that's quite a very, very big and strong army for Daenerys there. So she's going to have a good, good lot of help. And obviously she has three bloody huge dragons as well to help her out. So I reckon probably the season opener for season seven will be reports of this army invading and destroying everything. And that's what's going to happen there. So we're well ahead of the books. We are way, way, way ahead of the books. And I expect most of this stuff is probably what would have happened in The Winds. Of and of course, we have A Dream for Spring as the final book. But I expect this season coming up will be, obviously, The Winds of Winter. Most of that, because they say it's going to be the coldest winter and probably the longest for 1,000 years. And obviously Ned Stark has been saying for ages that it would happen, which Sansa and John had a good little laugh about as they remembered his father. Which, or not his father, her father. So this was a really, really good episode. I thought a really, really solid season. Possibly the best season yet. 
just for the fact that they didn't brood too long on things and then moving headfast straight towards new passages and uncharted territory for the show and the entire actual kind of franchise because the books aren't really finished yet. So, George, if you're watching, please finish those books. I want to read them badly. So if you enjoyed this episode, drop a like and a subscribe. And I'll be back for more in, well, I'm not really sure next year, I guess. But I will be covering all kinds of things on this channel non-stop all year with daily uploads. So I'll see you soon and goodbye.